Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today was we're actually doing a sort of an unplanned video. Um, I keep reading comments about people with high-end <clears throat> excuse me high high-end uh, high tier computers just struggling for the life of them to to get any kind of decent performance out of VR. Um, I helped another gentleman a, a few nights ago um, <clears throat> who had reached out and asked if I could give him a hand and again um, the uh, specs were uh, 2080 Ti uh, 8700K, 32 gigs of RAM, etc. Um, and I just saw another comment from one of our users who was saying that he had, uh, um, I think, 3080 overclocked um, and 9700K, etc. Um, and struggling just to the point where it's making him sick. So I'm going to go through a couple of different tips again, guys, to see if I can't help you smooth this out. Because when I helped the gentleman the other night, um, we got him up and running in a matter of seconds. I mean, it was it, not a matter of seconds, but it was about 10 minutes of troubleshooting total, and I had him clear and updated. Um, so let's, I'm going to run through some settings, and, and most of it, guys, is out of the sim. So most of these are going to be Windows settings, Windows alterations. Um, you know, the simulator's in the background right now, actually, because I was working on the A320 guy getting the update done, so um, <laughs> don't, don't pay no mind to that. It's just something fun to look at while you listen to me jabber. All right, so first thing that I'm going to tell you right now is you need to make sure that your Windows 10 is updated. Um, and there is a very re uh, specific reason for that. Normally, I'm not a big proponent on that, like in, in the aspect that it's not always required. Very rarely is a Windows 10 update specifically what's impacting your your performance but in this particular situation i think this was part of what allowed me to help the previous customer or customer <laughs> not customer uh, i'm thinking like i work i do it for a living so let's get into a few things here um if you right click on your start menu and you go to system okay let me bring that over here you should be able to see this guy right here okay this is your version of windows 10 all right, um, now you should all have access, if you're on a Windows 10 machine, to the 2004 update. Now, I don't know if it was 2004 that's required, but I know that's the latest release, and this is going to be something that you guys are going to want to have, and there's a reason for that, and we'll get to that in just a second. So first step is make sure that your Windows is up to date. If not, okay, if you don't see that, then what we can do is... Okay, so now that we're out of the sim... Um, some of the stuff's going to be very basic, very rudimentary, and some of it is going to get more advanced as we go on. But if you don't know how to check your updates, you just, just open up your start menu like I've done here and just start typing. Windows update settings. You don't have to click on anything. You literally start menu, start typing. Okay, so we're going to go to Windows update settings and you just check for updates. Okay, and there's a button right here, checking for updates. If it's not doing it automatically, there will be a button that says check for updates. Okay, let that run, let it update. You'll probably have to reboot, okay, depending on how far back you are, but there's a critical reason why. And so the next thing we're gonna do, again, hit the start menu, just start typing the game mode. I know I've come back to this a couple times, guys, but I proved it just the other night with a very high-end machine that this was absolutely impacting and breaking his stuff. And we're gonna go a couple different directions here. Game mode, turn it off. I I'm telling you guys, I know everyone says that they're supposed to be optimizing, it's not. Um, it's not an optimized protocol. It, it breaks things left and right. It's just and game mode specifically isn't probably the problem, but it's not helping. I mean, I just if you are one of those rare people that you truly have better performance with it. Fabulous. And, and I mean that. That's great. I'm just giving you guys tips for what the average setting is. And I know by default, when you do a Windows installation, this is turned on. So I'm telling you, turn it off. OK, just try it. The other one that you want to go to, and this is the reason that you need to update your Windows uh, 10, um, is if you come here to graphics settings, if you are not on a high enough version, this option may not be visible. Okay, now I, if memory serves, don't quote me, but I'm pretty positive, this is another feature that prior to this option being here was on by default and had to be disabled in the registry. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the one I'm thinking of. Either way, you want to turn this off, okay? I have yet to find anyone who is using VR with this setting on that is getting great performance. Okay, and so what it's supposed to do, it's supposed to improve the latency of the graphics card. Okay, basically the time it takes from CPU to 
um, GPU uh, transfer. Now, I'm not sure. I may be a little garbled about how this all works, um, but quite frankly, I have yet to find anything this works well with. Um, it's just, it's a nightmare for me. Um, for example, um, with it turned on, um, my VR just was absolutely unplayable, could not use it. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I fought with it for hours and hours and hours in my previous video about VR, uh, in Microsoft flight simulator. I had forgotten all about this thing and that I had just done a windows 10 installation because I built the new computer with the AMD and uh, forgot all about this dang thing. As soon as I turned it off, everything was crisp. Okay. Um, so, and some of you guys who are running 3080s and 3090s, you know, and complaining about bad performance, you guys are smoking my computer with that kind of processor, right? 8,700Ks, 9,700Ks with the 30 series cards. You guys should be stomping me. And I'm running the Pimax with the wider field of view on top of it. So, um, anyway, so I'm really trying to help you guys. So trust me, try this stuff. Now, the other thing that I will tell you, this one I would try first. This is my first go-to anytime now I have VR issues. Make sure this is turned off. Um, and try one thing at a time. Now, you can loop game mode and this graphic setting, the, the hardware accelerator GPU scheduling. You can loop these into one change. Okay, because when you change this, when you turn this off, it's going to force you, as it says here, you will have to restart the computer. Okay, um, but game mode, even if it is benefiting, you, it's not going to benefit you a ton where you're going to notice some massive difference by turning it off. So start there, restart, and then um, see what your performance is looking like. All right, and we're going to get into Microsoft Flight Simulator settings and things in a second. So just bear with me. So, all right. We've got that done, we've restarted, we've checked it out. Well, I'm still having some issues. So let's get into the next thing I want you guys to check. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is check out some Windows settings. So let's go in here. Now, first thing we need to do is go to your C drive, go to users, and verify whatever username that you are logged in with. Okay, some people don't know it, and so that's why I'm pointing this out. Whatever folder the name this is, it, and it will have a folder with whatever your login name is. So mine is Overkill. Okay. So from there, then we're going to go to back to C, and it does not matter what drive you installed this on. This particular folder is going to be here. Okay. So we're going to go C, Program Files, and you're going to want to make sure you go to View and that this Hidden Items is checked. Make sure that's checked. Okay. Because otherwise you won't be able to see the folder we're looking for. And we're going to come down here to Windows Apps. Let me back up. You may not have access to this. If it yells at you and says you do not have access, here's what we're going to do. You're going to go open, right click on it, and go to properties. We're going to go to advanced, or excuse me, yep, you want to be in security, then go to advanced. Then you're going to hit change. Okay, it's, it'll probably tell you um, the user or owner cannot be displayed or the name is not being displayed, something to that effect. We don't care. As long as you have access to this change button, I don't care what it says over here. So we're going to go to change. And then you're going to type in that name. So for my example, again, is overkill. And then hit check names. And you can see it should populate something similar to this. As long as it finds the name you typed, you're good. You're going to hit OK. And then you're going to make sure you check this box. Replace owner on subcontainers and objects. Hit that, hit apply. Okay, it'll run through this. You have just taken ownership, say okay, hit okay again. And that's all we should need to do there. Close that window, open up the apps. Find Microsoft Flight Simulator, right here. So here it is, Microsoft.FlightSimulator, gives you the version number and then a whole bunch of junk after it. Okay, and we can expand this for you guys. Okay, so then what you're gonna do is again, if you can't open it, you're going to repeat that process that we just did before. Okay, but I don't even know that I needed to. Hang on, let's check. Yeah, so it did it automatically, so it should have automatically done it. So we'll just go ahead and open this. And you're going to find the flight simulator.exe, this one right here. And you're going to go to properties. Okay, and you're going to come from here. Oh, I don't think I clicked what I wanted to. Let's try that again. Make sure you left click it once, then go to properties. There we go, that's what I wanted to see. And go to compatibility. 
And this guy right here, disable full screen optimizations, make sure that is checked, okay? What this is is another Windows attempt at optimizing any full screen game, okay? Um, and it doesn't work, okay? And what this will actually help you clear out is a bunch of stutters, okay? And you know we've talked about it in previous videos, but just in case anyone doesn't understand, there could be a, there's a major difference between FPS loss and stuttering, okay? Framing and stuttering. Stuttering, you just get these weird little ticks as you're turning your head and looking around, just real weird ticks. But then you look up at your FPS counter and it's a solid 60 frames, just throwing a number out here, okay? Um, or 30 frames, whatever in our case, whatever it may be. You know, the FPS is perfectly fine, but you're getting these weird little just, this these stutters, these just obnoxious little shakes. Guarantee, I'm willing to bet a lot of money on it that this is your issue, okay? Disable full screen optimization, just hit OK, and we're done here. All right. So those are some major Windows um, impacts. OK. The other thing is, obviously, make sure your graphics drivers are up to date. Now, obviously, I can only speak for NVIDIA. I, I haven't had an AMD graphics card in a long time. Although, again, just like with Intel, NVIDIA is starting to, or uh, AMD is starting to get my attention. Um, so... If you are on NVIDIA, if you don't have the GeForce experience, I highly recommend it. Just go ahead and Google it. Literally open up your browser and just type GeForce experience as you see it here. Okay, and then, it, or GeForce experience download, right? And then when that comes up, you just want to come, come over here, click on drivers, and hit tell it to check for updates and make sure you're on the latest driver. If you're not, when you... I wish I could force it. Um, I just don't have the time to to go through all that right now. When if it finds a driver update, you'll see two options: Express installation and Custom installation. I want you to select Custom installation, okay? And when you select Custom installation, it's going to bring up another box. It's going to give you the option of what you want it to install. You can leave everything checked. That's fine. What you're looking for is at the bottom of it. I think it's the bottom left. There's a box that says perform clean installation. Okay. And what that will do is remove the previous drivers before it installs the new one. I highly recommend doing that, especially every so often. It's one thing if it's a small patch, blah, blah, but um, I do recommend that as your uh, update procedure um, because what it will do if you don't is it literally just lays the new drivers on top of the old ones. Okay, and I've seen that cause issues. I've seen bugs with that behavior in the past. It's not it's not terribly common, but again, if you're trying to iron out every little issue that could possibly exist, this could be part of it. Okay, so I'm just trying to help you guys in any way I can. All right, so do that. And then after you do a video card update, it's not required, but remember that it's still a change to the registry. And anytime you make a change to the registry, I recommend restarting. Okay, anytime that you uninstall a program, if you're able to, restart, okay? Um, but anyway, so we've got our graphics cards updated. We've set our permissions in the um, executable. We've disabled the GPU acceleration. We've disabled game mode. Now let's talk about graphics card settings. You don't have to go crazy. Some people just go absolutely balls to the wall with this, and you don't need to. There are a couple very critical settings um, but then from there on out, it, it sort of it gets to testing. So I right clicked on my desktop. You guys saw I hit NVIDIA control panel. AMD guys, again, I'm not sure what the process is, but I'm sure if you just uh, look it up, that you guys will be able to find something. Now I reset all these to uh, default before I started this so you guys could see this. Power management mode, okay? If you're, these are the default settings for my RTX 2080 Ti on the current version of, of the driver version that you guys just saw, okay? So what I want to do is power management mode, prefer maximum performance. You do not want your video card throttling or trying to save power. You want that sucker to crank. You know, you spent 800 plus dollars on it, push it, okay? Then the other one, and this is again, temporary. This one is one that you, you can adjust, decide how, how it turns out is this one. Texture filtering quality. Until you've confirmed that your frame rate is good and everything's looking nice and okay, you know, you've relaxed a little bit, you're not wanting to throw your headset out the window um, or the simulator out the window, which I think would be more expensive because that's your computer. Set this to high performance, okay, and then hit apply. 
all right because then it's it's not going to worry about so much of image quality it's going to worry about pumping those frames out now here's one that i get mixed results on virtual reality pre-rendered fr frames now you can either use the 3d application setting or you can set this a bit higher to like two or three um, i've heard some users send it to four like with oculus i, I would say this one's going to be one that you want to change after you've tried everything else so change the first two first test it then come back in here this will help you smooth things out it might again reduce some stuttering this is not going to be a critical game breaking setting this is not something that's going to be causing your major stutters or making you sick as a dog okay so this is just finite tuning and that's the only reason why I'm, I'm showing it is just so that way you guys know it's there okay but don't rely on this to fix major issues because i guarantee that's not your problem all right so we'll go ahead and hit apply here okay so now we've got everything done in windows let's go ahead and um i'm going to show you guys steam vr okay um so i'm gonna launch my steam all right so in the steam vr settings you want to make sure that you check your um it's a couple of different things let's go to video to start with again if you're battling issues we want to turn advanced super sampling filtering to off okay so shut that to off and then your resolution per eye make sure you turn this down okay if it's set at 100 percent, go down to like 50 percent make a big enough jump that you can see the difference and if it still looks like crap i mean well sorry it's still it's absolutely going to look like crap um by cutting it whatever it's set to in half but then go into the sim and what you're looking for is is it smooth if it's smooth if it's usable then you can start playing with settings and start slowly moving things up okay um and that should be anyone who's using steam vr okay now i know there's the open xr i don't use it uh, i don't have to use windows mixed reality um and i don't know if it has any benefit to anyone who's not using windows mixed reality so um just keep that in mind there okay so with that being said i think now we're ready to take a look at the microsoft uh simulator settings all right so now we're in the sim but there's something i want to get you guys to see first and there'll be a link to this in the description below this is a really awesome guide that um, this gentleman put together for um, testing VR. And you can see his system specs here. Um, this is a decent system, but again, it, it's starting to show its age. So for those of you with the high-end tier systems, newly you know modernized hardware or modern hardware, this should be a sign don't give up. There's something else at play here okay so we come down here and this is what you want to look at okay your anti-aliasing options it draws out what you've got going on okay and the different effects they have now the other thing that you want to look at is if we go to the previous page and both of these links will be in here is this guy here this tells you what the impact on the simulator and on your GPU is, GPU and CPU. Okay, so 88% of your impact is going to come from the render scaling. Okay. So check out both of these links, read through all this stuff first before you get into adjusting your simulator settings. Okay, so... You can see here that we have 80%, 50% with TAA was a huge performance, okay? TA off and native rendering scaling, all right? So here's what we got. If I go into my options and I go to, what is it, general? And we're gonna switch over obviously to VR. Now I'm still using FXAA. Um, I could switch this over to TAA. I haven't honestly messed with it much. I like a higher render scaling because I think it's easier to see things. Um, so I would prefer higher render scaling over anti-aliasing. So that's why I went down to FXAA. Um, it is um, the least quality of the anti-aliasing, but also requires the least amount of horsepower. 
Okay, and um, then just sort of work your way down from there in VR. Um, and actually, I set those back up. I thought I did. But um, And then work your way in. But the biggest thing is render scaling. Take your render scaling down to like 50%. Anything below that, and you're going to have a horrible time even attempting to get it up enough where you can see it, um, in my opinion. Um, at least, you know, have any kind of decent quality. So think about that as you're moving forward. But... I would start with render scaling, turn it way down, and then turn everything down to low. Turn everything down to low. And then work your way up based on these settings here, okay? On, on what the usage is. Sorry, not the settings, because, you know, he's like me. He specifies do not copy it, okay? Um, but work from this chart. Look at the impact. What's the impact going to be? And work your way back down. Again, you can see volumetric clouds, huge impact. And that is fact. Um, so, um, these are things that you guys are going to want to do to try to troubleshoot your, uh, VR once you're in the simulator. But again, this is assuming at this point that it's at least, you should have, based on our previous troubleshoot, you should have already noticed a pretty significant difference. Okay. Um, the settings in the simulator, aside from the render scaling, um, should be fine tuning. It shouldn't, none of these settings should be game breaking unless you have them cranked. Okay. Um, but I would start out again, take your render scaling down to 50%. Take your anti aliasing, switch it to either off or FXAA. Again, you're going to be adjusting these later. And take your volumetric clouds. I would turn them to low. And I'm just going based off this. Okay. So we're going to take our, where are we? Oh, that was it. That's what I'm looking at. So the anti-aliasing, that was only 8%, but that's just, you know, so we, we've saved 8% there by going to 50% on the render scaling. We've probably saved about 30% of power there. Volumetric clouds, I would just turn them off while you're starting, okay? Because this is aimed at people who are just getting their butt whipped in VR. And so we're starting from the bottom and working our way back up. Once you have it where, yep, you can turn your head, everything looks nice and crisp, it, or, <laughs> sorry, Everything will probably look like crap at this point, but you can turn your head. You're not getting any major lags. You're not getting frame rates. You're not wanting to puke out your lunch. Um, once you're at that point, then slowly start bringing things up, starting with your render scaling. Okay, bring your render scaling up and everything will be visible, but it'll look real blocky and crappy, right? And then start working your way down into the other settings. Okay, starting with these ones here that I mentioned as the worst. Um, and actually, based on the suggestion that I have provided, I would do render scaling, get it to where, again, you can turn your head, you're not puking it, your brain's out. Then go to your um, anti-aliasing, and you can try TAA or FXA, try any of these. Um, and what this is going to do is it's going to bring clarity to the image. So now you're, you're going to get rid of a lot of the blockiness. Edges are going to start to smooth out, things like that. And things are going to start to become more legible. Um, and then from there, work this chart, okay, and work your way slowly bringing things up based on what's important to you. If the quality of the clouds isn't a game breaking, has to be freaking fantastic to you, then, you know, set your volumetric clouds at low and try to build it up somewhere else. You know, try to use that extra, that overhead for the GPU somewhere else, okay? Um, and from, like I said, from troubleshooting standpoint, from the simulator, from the settings, it's, it's trial and error, guys. It, it's, it takes a lot of time. It truly is. It, it, it's, it sucks. It's not fun. Um, sitting here going through setting, change it, setting, change it, setting, change it, check it, check it, setting, change it, right? It sucks. I get it. it um, do not try to copy anybody's settings, anybody's settings. Remember, you guys, especially for the people you I mean, you're talking about, you know, I want to mention that gentleman, I think I just saw a 3080 over or overclock super or something like that um, with a 9700K, 32 gigs of RAM, etc. You know, your processor and your video card are beating mine. Okay. And you're, you're having horrible frame rates. So don't try to copy my settings because my hardware is less efficient than yours is. Okay. Or I should say less capable than yours is. Um, and again, it goes back to what I've been saying about in so many of my videos. It Every computer is different. We all have different software. We have different antiviruses. We have different settings, different drivers, different peripherals, you know, and all of these things eventually can come to a head and start causing problems. And so you cannot just 
copy someone else's settings and hope that that's going to work. What I'm giving you and the, the settings I tried to give you guys today, and I hope I hope it helps because I, I I've been there. I, I certainly have not always had the tier, high, higher end tier system that I have now. Um, I've been there with the low end systems. I've been there with moderate systems. Um, that first day that VR launched, again, it was 10 hours of me troubleshooting Microsoft Flight Simulator before I remembered about that Windows setting. So I was right there with you. I was frustrated. I was bummed out. I was super excited for VR. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's why I jumped on and helped that gentleman the other night. You know, he was, he's one of our subscribers who just reached out um, and, and asked if I would mind giving him a hand. Um, and if you're truly in, in a dire situation, guys, reach out to me. I'll do my best to, to schedule a time where I can help. I have no problem with that, as long as you don't have any problem with me remoting into your machine. Um, so just best of luck to you guys. Comments, questions, leave them down below. Um, if you guys hit the About um, section on my YouTube page, you guys can find the Overkill Simulations email address. Um, email me. You know, Reach out. You know, I'll be happy to help anywhere I can, guys. Um, if you um, have purchased my A320 guide or subscribed on Patreon, uh, you have access to my Discord. Hit me up on Discord. Tell me you're having trouble. You know, I'll have you give me screenshots and things like that. You know, I'll do anything I can to help you guys out. I, I, that's what my channel is about in the end. That's why I made it was to try to help out the community. So I hope you guys appreciate this. I hope that it clears some things up for somebody. I hope somebody watches this and goes, "Oh my gosh, thank you so much." You know, and and it makes your day. So. Anyway, keep fighting, guys. We'll get it there, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care, folks.